Hi, I'm Chuck Dorsett for Weaver Leathercraft. We are making a beautiful rustic leather purse. Now, chapter four, we're going to hand sew. Now on the surface, this sounds like it's going to be very tedious. Well, it really isn't because of the way we're going to sew. We're gonna set a chisel line. We've already got our groove line. We've already got our guide for that. So once we set our chisel line, which in itself is pretty quick, we're gonna be able to sew about one, maybe two inches a minute. So we really can move along on our pouch here or our purse, 30 minutes at most, and we've got a stitch line, looks just like a machine stitch. Great part there, no expensive equipment, and we can just about sew anywhere. Now, anything I use in this video, weaverleathercraft.com, or look below, we've got links there, gonna take you straight to our website. So let's jump over here, set our chisel line, then we're gonna drop in our billets on our gusset, hand sew, one chapter, and this beautiful purse is complete. Now, with our chisels, we're going to use a five stitch per inch chisel. This is my favorite, five stitch per inch flat. That's just a little short of an eighth of an inch tying and spread. But to me, this makes a perfect stitch line. Here's a great example. This is from our project video on the journal cover. Notice that looks great. And as things always go, I think my best stitch line is of course on the back of the project. But nonetheless, five stitches per inch looks great. When we bump up to six or seven, those stitches really start to stack up. All right, so let's jump over to our gussets first because I can certainly measure this out, lay it out, but I don't wanna to have to mark on, on the top grain of my main body. If we chisel here first, we'll line this up next to our bodies, everything is gonna fall into place. All right, so with our chisel, we've got our groove line set in. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna drop this roughly in the middle of the gusset. So it looks like I have one tine on one side and one tine on the other, good. So let's drop that in, square that in our line. All right, need to hit it just a little bit harder. There we go. Okay, I can see tines across the bottom. Now let's open that up. Cool, clean and straight. All right, on this side, let's take our chisel, drop it in the existing holes, and add one hole on each side. That looks good. Okay, clean and straight, just what we're looking for. Now on this side, what I wanna do is since we're going to work up from our bend or our corner, I'm going to take my first tine and I'm going to butt it right next to the end of the leather. So basically it's going to be as if I'm simply, simply starting here from a pre-existing stitch line, okay? So let's drop that in our chisel line. There we go. Now I don't wanna pull my, my chisel out left or right. Let's go horizontal. There we go. These are great, very high quality chisels. Not really worried about bending a tine, but sometimes I'll get a little carried away I'll drop this in while it's still in the board. I'm thinking about removing it. Well, again, if I go lengthwise, it's no issue. All right, so let's follow this right up to our to the throat. There we go. All right, just two more. And this great thing about this project, all straight lines. So therefore, with a six chisel, no problem. I can really move along. There we go. Okay, I'm up towards my throat. I really just need one more chisel. So I'm gonna line that up. I could always really, I could always take my two, drop first time, last hole, and you notice too, as I move along, I'm always dropping my first time in my last hole. That way, everything is gonna match up beautifully. When I jump over to this side, work my way up, those holes are gonna be absolutely even. Now, usually with, this, with a project like this, I'll sit down and just punch not really worry about making everything line up because it's going to. The chisel will do the job for me, okay? So I'm gonna work my way up this side, chisel the bottom here and on both sides here. At our last hole, all right, now, since we use first time last hole, let's take a look at this. See if we can see that clean and clear. Look at that, every hole lines up all the way up. Cool, that's what we're looking for. All right, so let's jump over to our body. Now, with this, we don't wanna get our first hole too close. So we can lay our pattern out. There we are, butt that again, against the end, there we go, all right. Now I'm gonna lay this right in. Okay, cool. Easy enough to see exactly where my chisel holes are. So, let's chisel this. 
I'm going to drop my chisel right in my groove line again. There we go. All right, let's lift that up. Now we just need two more holes. So drop my chisel in for existing. There we go. All right, so since we use first time, last hole, these are automatically going to line up. But we need to give this extra room here because we don't want to put a hole right, right in line with that one, another chisel hole, because that's going to make that bend too hard. So let's do this. Let's drop our pattern over. All right. Now with this, I'm going to drop a chisel in. In fact, let's use a two. I'm going to drop a chisel in right next to my bend line. There we are. Okay. Now basically what we're doing is coming out one hole from our bin. So let's drop that in there. Make sure I'm in my groove line. There we go. Okay. Now again, since we're doing first time last hole, I'm just going to work this down. There we go. And coming into our last hole, I'm going to drop that in. Look at that. That just fits perfectly. There we are. Those holes are absolutely even. Cool. Okay, so that's easy enough. What I'm going to do is drop this on the other side, lay my pattern in, and I'm going to do exactly the same thing. So I'll, I'll uh, do my chisel line here, my gusset, the center of my gusset, and the two chisel lines there. And coming into our last chisel holes, there we are. Okay, that is going to line up perfectly. Now, even if this isn't spot on, and it's actually hard not to be, first time, last hole, every hole is absolutely perfect. So I can really use this gusset either side and it's going to line up. We don't have to mark that. All right, so let's do this. Let's step over to our quartz and we're going to drop our gusset, our billets, onto our gussets. Now, the best way to do this really is to set these last, but here's the problem. If we get these sewn in, and I'm going to try to drop my billets on this, then I'm going to have to press my purse down onto a punching surface. That can be kind of a headache. The headache with putting these on first is that when we sew this, they're very close to our stitch line. So our stitch is going to hang up on this just from time to time, but it's not really a big headache, okay? But here's a cool little trick in my shop. I've got a two by eight inch piece of board about a foot long with a metal strip across the top. So all I have to do there is open my flap, insert that, and then I can set my rivets on that after this is sewn. But really, it's not gonna be that big of a headache. All right, we're gonna use a double cap rivet, and these are absolutely my favorite. Cap on the back, looks very professional. But also too, this has got a little crimp in the throat. So I can snap that on. Where this really helps is if I'm working on a project and I've got a lot of rivets on that, they're not going to fall apart, roll around on my table. That's very, that's very frustrating. Okay. So with this, we're going to use a medium double cap rivet. There's quarter inch, five sixteenths and seven sixteenths, but we're going through three plies here. So that's actually going to be just perfect. All right. So let's take a one inch D ring and we took our time on our pattern. So everything is going to line up nicely, but this can be a little confusing particularly if we have a single gusset going all the way around. Our D-rings need to face out. So let's drop that in. Look at that. Everything is just fitting nicely. Okay. Let's just snap our, our cap down onto our post. There we go. All right. Very good. Now with our setter concaved in, we want to make sure that's on our rivet so we don't crush the cap or flatten it. There we go. Well, that looks great. Spot on. Our pattern is just right. Okay. So I'm going to set the other one and then we're going to jump over here and we're going to hand sew this together. All right. Very nice. Cool. All right. Let's step over here to our sewing horse, knock in a few stitch lines and we are all but there. Now to save us a little time, I've got a set up. We're going to sew the bottom of the pouch, the gusset to the bottom of the pouch. Now I've lined up my holes our inner set. I've dropped a needle in there so it's nice and even and dropped in a clip. But notice too, since we use a groove line, look at that edge. That just sits perfectly flush. Okay. Now, a couple of points here. I feel like I open every segment with a long list of, of information, but in this situation, we need that because there are a couple of great tricks to hand sewing. We're going to do a saddler stitch, which basically is just a back and forth stitch. Okay. With that in mind, and a lot of this is going to make sense very shortly. But first off, I'm going to go through my first hole with one needle. 
Notice here I've got a needle on both ends of my thread. Now, one needle, then I'm going to go back and forth as we move down. All right, couple points. First off, I don't want to take one of those needles, sew down and sew back. That's a big no, because first off, I'm going to pull left, right, left, right, and I'm going to get this big serpentine thing going. Secondly, bigger problem, on my way back, I run the risk of splitting a thread going through every hole coming back. Really don't want that. But the cool thing is, is because I'm going to draw this out at the same time, I'm going to get very even tension in every hole. Makes the whole thing very easy. Okay, thread. We need about three to four times our length. Now, with this little stitch line, that means I need about six inches of thread. That's not going to work. But the point here, first off, thread is incredibly inexpensive. I don't think I've ever finished a spool of thread. There's probably a mile there, all right? Secondly, though, I don't want to get on a long stitch line. I don't want to get all the way down to the end and have these two little nubs here that I'm going to try to tie a knot with. So let's waste some thread. Very inexpensive. If we waste two feet, we're out less than a penny, okay? So let's pull our needle out. First hole, one needle. That's easy enough to remember, right? There we go. Okay, we're started. Now, again, with a longer stitch line, I want to go full length. So therefore, maybe over here, I'm going to have maybe three feet of thread. What I don't want to do is have to keep pulling that all the way out. So what I can do is choke up on my thread, and as I move through the stitch, I can pay out thread. That makes things very easy, okay? One needle first hole, cool. Let's jump over to our second hole. I can lead from left to right, open that hole up, and my second needle falls in, okay? Let's push that about halfway through, make an X, cool. I'm gonna move my thumb and first finger from the back of the needle to the front of the needle. So I simply make that move, and I've got a stitch, okay? Let's give a little tension to that, and we'll get the hang of the tension here. With veg tan, we can really crank on that. With a softer leather, we want to be a little more careful. Okay, going to jump over to our second hole. Go about halfway through, make an X. Okay, when I said we can really move through this, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Because now, our needles are moving right through. And you know what? As I move, I'm done here. I don't have to go down and come back. All right, let's take our little clip off. Let's sew right to the end of our gusset. Now, like I said, we can be pretty quick. Okay, two more holes. So, on the second to the last hole, gonna sew that just like every other hole. Cool. Now, on our last hole, I'm simply gonna come through the back, go through one ply, I'm gonna come through the front, go through one ply. Now, you'll notice too, your hands will quickly become accustomed to that next stitch being about an eighth of an inch. At, very shortly into hand sewing, you're not even going to have to pay attention. Your, your fingers know where that next hole is. Okay? So right here, I'm going to pull that tight. We're going to do a square knot. Okay? Left over right, circle around, and then we're going to draw that up under there. Okay? Now, right over left, circle around, and draw that down in there. So really what we have is a hidden knot. Now let's clip our thread. Let's see if we can get that thread clip down in there. There we go. All right, that knot is totally hidden. Now we're gonna hammer down our stitch line once we're done here. It's gonna close our holes up. It's gonna spread that stitch out, make it look very consistent. Okay, so I'm gonna flip this over, sew the other gusset, and then we're gonna start on our longer thread lines. Okay, we've got that. Gussets are sewn on, and in fact, that literally took less than five minutes to sew both of those on. All right, let's release our horse. Let's pull this down to where our gusset is just outside so that we can make a nice even bend around there. Now, clips are always our friend because what I'm going to do is clip that piece over there because it's going to be over here and it's going to be flapping around. All right, now with this, let's press our corner right down in our bend, there we go. And again, camera shot on this using both hands and a close-up's a little bit tough, but you'll see where we're going with all of this. All right, we're gonna drop in a clip. Now, that doesn't have to be absolutely flush. Our stitch line, or our stitch is going to do that for us, okay? Already looks like a good corner. Now, again, four times our length, and the great thing about hand sewing needles is no sharp point, 
but I've got plenty of eye there for this bigger wax thread. So, same as the last, but we want to make sure here that we're going through our first hole. And let's see, we're coming in from the back there. In fact, let's do this. Let's come through our front. There we go. I want to make sure I'm on the first hole back here. If I miss that hole, the whole thing's going to be a little cockeyed, and we don't want that. All right, so, saddler stitch, one needle, first hole. All right, now let's jump to our second needle, or our second hole, because now both needles make an X, pull that through. And again, not a great camera shot, but we're going to do the best we have with what we got. All right, so, next hole, easy enough. I'm going to find that hole with my needles, push those through, make an X, and pull that. All right, now. Let's work that corner in just a little bit because now that we're getting a couple of stitches in, in here, that's going to force that down. So let's give that some tension. All right, look at that. That corner already looks good and square. Cool. So I'm going to sew right down to the end and I'm going to tie a knot inside, a hidden knot, just like we did on our gussets. All right, coming down. Very nice. That looks great. Now, right off the bat. Look how flush our edge is and how clean our stitch line is. That is beautiful. That's exactly what we're looking for. And again, right here, look at those two pieces. They match spot on. We took our time with our pattern and we took our time with our chisel work. Okay, so last hole, just like our gusset, I'm going to come in one ply from the back, one ply from the front. Now, we could sew up and around that corner, come back and tie our stitch, but to me, that is a very high wear point, therefore that thread is going to be totally exposed as it goes around that corner. What I would prefer is that my thread tucked tight. It's not going to wear. Okay, again, right over left, circle around, draw down in. Now, left over right, circle around, and draw that down in. Very cool. All right. One side done, and it literally took minutes to do. So let's clip that off, clip that down in there. Open that up a little bit, clip it there, good. Okay, now I'm going to sew the other three sides just like this, and our pouch is almost done. There we go, okay, looks good. Everything matching up nicely, clean edges, good tight corners, very nice. And I think that took maybe about half an hour, maybe 35 minutes to, hold, to, uh, to sew the whole pouch. So let's do this. Let's take our pouch. Rustic and beautiful, looking good. All right, let's take this over to our quartz because we have one more step on our stitch line. All right, I couldn't be happier with the pouch. Everything looks good. Our corners are clean and square. Our stitch line is beautiful. Now, this is a chrome tan, a little bit softer. My point here is that with a veg tan, we can bevel, we can sand, and then we can slick. So our edges are always spot on. Not really the case here, but in all honesty, because we used our groove line, everything matches up. Our corners, this is beautiful. All right, so let's do this. I'm going to drop my pouch or my purse right on the edge of my quartz. Now, I can certainly use a mallet or a tack hammer, but I'm simply going to hammer that stitch line down. Very cool. Okay, so that closed my holes, sunk my stitch into my groove line, made everything clean and tight. Now. With a veg tan, we've got plenty of body there. This is my point here. With a veg, we've got plenty of body. What I would do normally here is set one more chisel hole on our body so we can stitch that corner down. But the point with this pouch, we're keeping it simple. All right, so I'm going to hammer down my other edges. Then we are on to chapter five. Let's put this together.